checking in. How you doing, brother? Great, man. I'm great. So happy to see you guys. You're yeah, you too, man. It's great to see you. This is Who's awesome. Reminds me of Italy. Italy, yeah. We've What's been, up, everybody? We've been, we've been everywhere this, together. This yeah. whole thing is going crazy. Yeah, it's great to see everybody here. We see all these comments. It's super awesome. Hold on, I'm just uh, doing a little housekeeping. I'm getting everything ready. Ian's our housekeeper. Oh, yes. Where are you guys right now? Dude, look at our We're set. We're at the Brothers Bond yeah, Studio. Look at oh, this. Thick. Well, you can't see much. There's we, got our like little, we got a whole bar, dude. Set. That's got, like, cool. yeah. oh, okay. We're professionals, Nate. No, Bro, we look I'm like bummed. professionals, but you guys have proven it like savants, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, thank you, man. We're happy to be here. So, dude, um, first of all, thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me. Seriously, this is so cool. Secondly, thank you, for everybody, for, for putting up with Paul. For wasting your time and being on this IG Live with us. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. After they taste it, I don't think they're going to find it a waste at all. Yeah, right? I, got, I got three here now. And I've got two backups. So I'm ready to rock, man. Awesome. Let's do it, man. Awesome. awesome. So talk we're, to ready. Me. we're ready for whatever. Let's yeah. get into it, bro. Dude, this is crazy. So talk to me about this bottle, because you got definitely savants in the bourbon game. You're not you're not amateur hour. You guys know your stuff. And that's the thing with my crowd, is that my crowd knows their stuff. So I wanted yeah, to hear what you thought about how everything came together and you know you guys know the, the brand and the blend inside out so talk to me about that wow i mean how, how it all came together the, the whole uh, formation you know what how it all came together we can yeah absolutely i love that but i mean you guys are like you know know it's in this game right so i mean when you were talking to me earlier about about the blend i'm actually really curious about the blend so talk to me first how it did come together because i am very curious yeah, Ian, let's talk a little bit about the mash bill and the yeah. blend and how this whole thing came together. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I was just putting I just wanted to make sure I put a like a screenshot of something on uh like on my main feed. Just because you know, we want people, you know, oh, seeing great. this. So, you know, listen, go ahead. I mean, listen, man, obviously, thanks for the super kind words. This this stuff is really special to us. But you gotta realize, man, this guy and I spent eight years on TV together all day, every day. And these characters only drank bourbon. Um, that's it. And so just in a, in a textural aspect of our lives, bourbon was everywhere. I mean, look, I'm from the deep South. Bourbon was a part of culture, right? But being on Vampire Diaries and drinking bourbon with this guy, even seven in the morning, which was obviously was tea, uh, but it was always there. And so Paul and I, even at the end of a long day, <laughs> Paul would just at some point just go, I need a bourbon. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I many, many, right many times throughout the day, many <laughs> times throughout the day. You know, so it was like, you know, to Ian's point, it was something that, you know, we sort of like was ingrained in our, you know, obviously in our characters. But apart, apart from that, uh, uh, Ian and I, we're bourbon drinkers, period, end of story. It's the only spirit I drink. Um, and it's the spirit that appeals to my palate and my sensibilities. And, and Ian as well, specifically by being in this, uh, from the South. We shot the show in Atlanta and Georgia is, you know, quite a dark spirit heavy state. And um, and we both just fell in love with it. And so, you know, we're on the show for eight years. We talked for, for eight years about doing a bourbon together. But, you know, there's a lot of it's a very complex spirit, as as your as your uh, viewers know, uh, creating a bourbon is not easy. And, and we didn't want to just slap our names on a bottle. You know, we can get a, a mash bill sent to us and, you know, go, OK, great. And slap our names on a bottle and say, OK, cool. We blended this ourselves. This is a four grain that we blended. Uh, out of uh, well, it took of, over yeah over a year. Well, it took every day, but it was a yeah, it was a year of blending. Three three grains to get this four grain. Three three grains to get this four grain that we were using graduated measuring cylinders, cylinders all over the all over room. Ian's living room, kitchen, and everywhere. And yeah. we were, you know, and we wouldn't yeah, and we but to us, I mean, like obsessive but in yeah. a way of passion like to the half millimeter yeah and we mean? wouldn't compromise until we got exactly the blend that For we millimeter. wanted and we and we happen to have the exact same palette right when it comes to burn yeah. and um and anyway once we found this thing it was like a eureka moment and and uh, it was a big eureka you know, moment yeah and the was... thing that like we're, we were chasing and i'll let i'll let you ask your questions in a second was like this two-parter, right? Yeah. It's like we wanted it to be approachable. Immediate. We wanted it to be, you know, smooth. 
drink it, boom. You could drink it neat. You drink it on the rocks, it, it's just smooth. Right out of the bottle. But then, mm -hmm. on top of that, we wanted it to be complex enough for people like Ian and myself and your viewers to drink bourbon. And that, I think that's what we accomplished. And that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a couple of viewers here that are, are diehards on the bourbon side, right? So, you know, Bourbon Finds, who you guys know, Bourbon Virgin. Yes. Nicola Rist, she's been uh, a big friend, big friend. She's she's one of the heads of the talent for the Brand Ambassador program. So, you know, you've got some great people coming on here and seeing the quality that you guys are producing. And I had mentioned to people, and I mentioned to you before, for me, this, the nose was hugely Scotch whiskey-based in, in, in the utmost complimentary way. Like, I got more complexity than I normally do out of a bourbon from your guys' bourbon here. I literally was like, wow, there's something going on here that's, that's un-bourbon-esque looks like they've done some really creative, you know, kind of complexion based blending here. And then on top of that, the, the palate was just like lights out good for me. You know, I could taste the weededness and I think we discussed this before. And, you know, I think it's something that's so original in the market. And I was also saying to you guys that, you know, there aren't a whole lot of celebrity brands that actually do a good thing right now. And, you know, maybe, maybe two or three. And you guys are definitely, in my opinion, number one for what you're kind of taking on that. Dude. Thank you so Bro, much. That gives me chills. It is killer. And that's the thing. I wanted to taste it with you guys neat and in a cocktail if you guys were cool. Yeah, he's uh, fetch us some glasses, uh, Smoldy. Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the, uh, as I said, the housekeeper of- uh, Your wish is my command. Oh, there it is. That's, uh, there's our tasting glasses. Your wish right. is my command. Dude, I got your whole setup and I'm so excited. I can't even believe this. Not you even know, man. One glass, man. This is, this is awesome. Yeah. Hey, you know, I wanted to one glass, man. This is this is awesome. Yeah, hey, you know, I wanted to I wanted to point something out. And you first and foremost, I'm not kidding, like from bourbon finds to what you're doing to everyone, we're so grateful to actually be able to have these meaningful conversations and for people that the fans of our show to come on and see the the real experts and the people that have their finger on the pulse and who have so much passion. But, you know, one thing that, that I remember that I wanted to just sort of point out, which I always tell people, and I don't want them to be like embarrassed about it, which is when you are tasting or, you know, tasting bourbon, it's like wine. And what we talked about on our call is your first taste, first sip may not be your best because you have no, there's no way in hell you can know it's on your palate at that moment. And so, so I, I always tell people that, you know, um, but you know, obviously these glasses give you an ability to get in there and get that nose and anyone watching, you know, I might be pretty early on the West coast, but you know, if you want to smell this, even just in a regular glass on the high end, as you know, this Nate, the higher end, you're going to get different floral notes. You're going to get that like, orange peel and as you go date deeper and deeper into the glass now you're going to get that baked banana bread that real warm spice it's so funny that you say that because i was i was talking with, with you guys and you were saying the banana bread and like i totally get it and then i was getting chocolate and, and graham crackers and i was just getting a wave of sweetness that you know you normally get from a bourbon finished whiskey you know not a bourbon itself in that sense. And you're, that's what made me lead to, is this, you know, more of a scotch really on the nose, which I think is just so cool, you know, to, to diversify something that, you know, bourbon can only be finished in so many ways, right? And so to actually have something that gives this much character and complexity, that's super cool. And, you know, let's talk about, about this. So it is Indiana on the back and I love that, it, that it's Indiana, you know? I'm, I proudly, proudly Indiana. Yes, proudly Indiana, absolutely. Proudly best in the world comes from Indiana. So talk to me about that. Was that process a lot of fun? Actually, I mean, listen, it, you know, we, Paul and I get out in front of it. We are MGP proud. This is, when you go back and look at the history, 1809, producing whiskey for, they haven't been producing whiskey for a generation. You're talking generations as this country was being built. Yeah. And so to not, to shy away from that or not fully embrace that is crazy. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, we, the alcohol business is a scrappy business. So we, we elbow and fight our way in to only get the absolute best of MGP. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to source through it, and you've got to like go to blows over it. That's your baby, you know. And you were saying to me, you know, the forty percent. This does not drink forty, man. This drinks like it could be, you know, higher and still that complex, you know, which is just crazy to me that you guys are getting that much out of this at, at that cask strength. You know what I mean? At forty, you're getting that almost CS type of taste, which I love. And it's interesting too, you know, because we, so we do only small batches. Um, we, we have to, and that's the only way that we know that we can get that quality control. Okay. And, and, you know, you can tell the difference of where the barrels are coming from when they're at the top of that house, especially, you know, look, summers in, in Lawrenceburg, Indiana are hot. And that angel share, it, it goes way, yeah. way, way. These angels are just, these angels, <laughs> they're, are gonna be, they're <laughs> hammered, dude. These that, angels are hammered. That, yep, absolutely. But like the profile, like to your point, it does drink like something that's older and something that's bigger. And that's what we were going for. And we're so proud of this. Well, look at the dolphins. We're so proud of this specific, uh, specific blend uh, that, you know, everything that we do. Uh, so we have a cask strength, you know. And everything that we do, every every type of age statement is all going to have the DNA of this flagship bourbon that right. that we put together. Yeah, no, we had an unbelievable, you know, because the DNA of this is so great, and and it came from you know the top down. Vincent was telling us, you know, and we all we don't want to divert from this. Everything we do, line extensions, we have an eight year program that's going to blow your mind. Cast drink, the brothers bond, bottled and bond, hundred proof version is unbelievable but it will always have this DNA. And going back to those small batches, you know, we never do more than 135 barrels at a time. Never, okay. you guys ever, know. never, never. Oh. And it allows us, you know, in the amount of quality control that goes down that pipeline and it allows us to know each batch, mm -hmm. which is, te you know, you, you gotta be in it. And so that's why we're so excited. And so when you get into the nose of this thing, yeah, and cheers, by at, a, at a 39.99, you know, bottle of bourbon. Ridiculous. That's that awesome. is a four grain and 80 proof that even like, you know, you look at um, tasting panel, you know, we just got a 93 point rating on an 80 proof bourbon, which is almost unheard really of. hard. Unheard of. And on that note, cheers, boys. Cheers, brother. Cheers. I've been smelling this for about 20 minutes. I'm ready to go. So, <laughs> every, so, so obviously there are a lot of people that know bourbon, but for all of you who are joining in, when you sip this bourbon, you know, Small sips are good, but you get a nice sip in there. Really move it around, get some air into it. Mm. God, mm. that is phenomenal. Someone actually said a comment. Now that I know you blended up MGP, I like it even more. <laughs> awesome. Wow. You see that nice sweet kick on the back end? Right away. Now your second <laughs> sip is gonna be even better. And you're gonna get an equal sensory proportion, right? All those grains are expressed over your palate, but in total harmony and balance. I'm not trying to sound too kumbaya about it, but it's true, right? Absolutely. So for everyone out there trying this. Oh my gosh. That sweet spice that comes in after, almost like a cinnamon or cardamom, just gets you very, very mildly. That's right. Gosh. Now, I will, I will say we'll take some time here to, sh to shout out Reserve Bar that made this all happen. Uh, I, I know there's a reserve bar code that I'll put up after for everybody that wants yes. to there, there is a code that is coming, so I will put that up for sure. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, reserve bar is actually where we first launched uh, Brothers Bond to the public. So when before we, you know, before Brothers Bond was available at all the retail stores, et cetera, we did uh, two pre-sales on reserve bar, and they went, you know, phen phenomenally well. Yeah, um, set a lot of records. Set some records, um, yeah. So, so we, so reserve bar... We go way back. <laughs> you guys were doing the signings on the bottles. Was that for Reserve Bar? No, no, no. We did. Yes, we did do some signings. But right. when we launched the pre-sales of Reserve Bar, there were no. Yeah, it was just the bottles. It, it was a. It was a pre-sale. It was the first time it was available. Well, initially, remember, we we had ten thousand bottles. We said, all right, we have ten thousand bottles of bourbon. Let's put five thousand bottles on Reserve Bar, and let's just see what happens. Yep. So, and we knew we had that other five thousand that we wanted to do something else with. We put it on reserve bar and we're so thankful to reserve bar. In four hours, all 5,000 bottles were gone. So we realized, oh wait, what? I guess we should take those other 5,000, put them on. And then they were gone. So it was 16 hours, 10,000 bottles were gone. Get out. 
And that, by the way, but also too, which we were so grateful for, this was also people buying this in November for bottles they weren't going to get until March. Come on. So they knew. <clears throat> the second pre-sale was really unbelievable. We had 24,000 bottles. We hypothesized and said, listen, you think we can sell 1,000 bottles an hour? We don't know. And the first 15 minutes, 5,000 bottles were gone. And then the first 40 minutes, 10,000 bottles were gone. And then we had to shut it off, obviously, because we had to shut it off for 24 hours because we ran out. But, you know, it was just really special to see people loving that and knowing that they were going to get a chance to taste this and experience this with us. It was just awesome, man. So Reserve Bar did that, and it was just amazing. And, and everyone out there who bought those initial ones, you helped set us on this course, and we appreciate you for it. That is super cool. And, and you know, later on, after we're done everything here, I've got a couple of audience questions, if that's okay. And I've got some Absolutely. Sweet. Okay, cool. Um, and then I already made myself last night and, and on the weekend a couple of the cocktails that we're going to do. So, man, that is crazy good. We have a great cocktail program. Oh, yeah. That's unbelievable. Are you doing the cocktail program in restaurants as well? We do. Well, we have there's certain restaurants uh, where, you know, they've incorporated like the Brothers Fashion and hopefully as on premise kicks in more and more because um, we all know on premise there was a real, you know, lag, obviously, with everything that's happening in the world. But as on premise kicks in, we'll, we'll start getting our cocktails in all those restaurants, etc. And also, too, it's inspiring bartenders to really get in there and, you know, we're encouraging, you know, new twists on all on, on really classic cocktails. But this bourbon is so smooth and approachable and amazing that pe people are just really, really, um, you know, sucking it down and really appreciating it for what it is, even if it's a simplistic form of just ice. We also have, you know, world-class mixologists who, you know, put together this uh, drink strategy along with us, and she's you know, phenomenal. And so, you know, it's, it's just, these cocktails are really special. And it's seasonal. Like, there's a seasonality to it, right? Yeah. Like. Let's just stay in the game and have fun throughout these different parts of the year. Hey, and you know what's funny is that I was telling you this guy earlier that my crowd is 89% men. Your crowd is 89% women. But I think that women have a much superior palate to men when it comes to tasting this stuff. So this is like right up their alley with something like this. You know, it's just got everything that anybody could ever want. But I think that women are going to be able to extract more notes out of the palate than men are just inherently. You know, there's so much going on here. I think women extract more out of life <laughs> than men do. 100%. I could they're agree. a lot more, they're just a little bit more, they're a lot more aware uh, of everything. I know. Um, you know. Things. So let me ask you a question, man. What are some of the questions or comments that are, you know, obviously you have people that know bourbon, right? Absolutely. Um, there's some cool ones here. So I'm going to pull up a couple of here. Um, um, so basically, long story short, we've got some really cool ones. So, all right. So number one is, you know, with so many bourbons available on the market, what sets Brothers Bond apart and why should I try it? With so many bourbons on the market, what sets Brothers Bond apart? Yeah. God, so many reasons. I mean, that's the idea, right? Again, if you are new to bourbon or it's not, and like Paul mentions this all the time, you know, our goal is to become a bourbon that people could try or people that typically don't see bourbon or brown spirit as their spirit of choice once you taste this and you recognize like we were just saying the profile of this of the aromas on your palate the versatility and drink strategies or just over ice or meat it's a bourbon you can get into the into right you can actually get into bourbon with this spirit because it's approachable yeah and also you know kick you in the teeth we created this bourbon uh first of all those who tried Brothers Bond, number one, you're drinking a bourbon that Ian and I created, okay? In terms of the, the taste uh, palette, everything you taste is what we created together. It's not just like some corporate bro uh, a bourbon that people are throwing at you and you're buying it uh, because there's great marketing. We created this. Um, the the other, the other, every, every single thing, every you, single see. thing you see, we created, whether it's the when label, and and you know the the name and obviously the mass yeah exactly there's our merchandise everything and you know the other the other thing is we created this bourbon to bring people together i know it sounds a bit cheesy uh but ultimately brothers bond even though the, the name is brothers bond and it's you know obviously a nod to us and our uh, uh sort of uh, connection with one another as co-stars on a show but also friends in real life 
this is also about bringing people together, you know, so whether you're drinking this with, with your buddies or your family or, you know, a stranger you meet at a, at a bar, you know, we want this to be enjoyed uh, in good company. Yep. And so that's the ethos of our brand. And then the final thing I'll say is that there is a, a give back component, um, which is oh. unique. I think it's not something that a lot of brands offer. You know, we're giving back a percentage of all of our profits to um, regenerative agriculture. Um, and we have a lot of sort of initiatives in that in that department. And I think that really sets us apart from other brands as well. Yeah. So can I ask you something with respect to the, you were talking about the cask strength bottle and the 100 proof bottle and, and the eight year. When are those coming to the market? You know, we just Good had question. that, we literally just had that call uh, two day, 48 hours ago, which is, you know, we wanted this stuff to be available for holidays right out of the gate. The thing about it is, I mean, I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but it is a literal feat <laughs> to get this to market with the level of demand. You know, we just released a press release yesterday. I don't know. Did you see the press release we released? I did. 50,000 cases in the first four months uh, in market. And that, oh, thanks, man. We're, 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 you have, we have to pinch ourselves, right? And, and um, I was at, uh, our, our, our distributing partners and family are in DC. I was, we were at the major, um, in, in California, the big, big warehouse. It was like almost 2 million cases there of spirits signing, you know, two pallets of our bourbon, you know, just signing, signing, signing. But that in and of itself, I don't think that we need to just rush and release a cast ring, release a bottle and bond. We're, we are, we could not be more busy at, with this. Let this get into the market. Let people really appreciate it. And once we roll these line extensions and the eight-year statement, the eight-year that we have, you know, one year uh, in a barrel for each year we were on air, and I explained to you that four-year rollout of that, it's just, it's a lot. And we don't, you know, we want to do one thing well at a time, but, man, we are literally itching to get this into market. So hopefully early, early, you know, January or Q1, it's out. It's super cool because it seems like just everything you've done is almost for the fans in the sense that, you know, other people have created labels that were around things that are post their show. But the fact that you call the Brothers Bond, I think, just connects everybody to you right away. And and then the fact that you're adding an actually amazing spirit to this and not just throwing something in the market is just kudos to you guys. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Thank Thank you. you. Question number two. Did you guys disagree on anything while creating the bourbon? And if so, what was it? You know, Ian and I are very different people. Uh, he's glass half full, I'm glass half empty, and we balance each other out in yeah. that sense. You know, he's always like smacking me to be to put a smile on my face, and I'm smacking him to bring him down to reality. So it's like it's really nice to have that partnership. But the, you know, the one thing we do agree on is bourbon, and uh, it's kind of crazy. Bourbon I mean, and style, yeah. Right? And we just you know we just like we totally agreed on all of the sort of particulars, whether it's the design, the label, the name, we both, the minute we found the name, we were like, that's it. We both knew it was it, right? Um, and then the mash bill, immediately I tasted it. I said, holy shit, this is it. Yeah. He said, holy shit, this is it, pardon my language. But we were and like so little we're, kids, like, you know. Yeah, exactly. And Paul, Paul doesn't get super excited about things sometimes. And when he does, he sort of like closes in a little bit. So when we had, when we finally got this. I malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, like a computer that's like, Remember, the, overload, remember, overload. remember the fembots in Austin Powers? Yeah, I saw him. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but when we got when we got this taste, we tasted it, and, and and by the way, once we got it, we set it down. We came back an hour later. We were like, let's try it here. Let's try it there. Let's try it in the barn or take it home. Try it at seven in the morning. Let's make sure this. But Paul tried this and he drinks it and he goes, and I saw him pause. He got really serious for a second, and he just goes, "That's really good, man." Like he was, was almost like half emotional. Like I didn't even know what was going on, but it was really like emotional. I didn't know if like no. a jury had just like convicted him and given him twenty five years, or we just found our bourbon. But I yeah, no. So so the, the short of it is that we we actually agreed on virtually everything. That's just kind of crazy. And also, too, by the way, I will say, there's a lot of. Uh, 
sidestepping in business. You've got to be aware and you've got to be conscious of everyone's thoughts and feelings. Paul and I have been in this so long together that we have immense respect for one another. But if I have an idea that really is not going to work, Paul will look at me and he goes, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I'll go, shit, you're right, move on. So we don't, there's nothing incendiary that we can say to each other that we haven't already been through. Right. So you just move through stuff. And it really cuts out a lot of, it saves a lot of time and a lot of the BS. And then we can laugh about it. And yeah, I, I, I'm all about when it comes to business and frankly, when it comes to life, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm like, if I have an opinion, I state it. And I think it's the best uh, to always be honest with your partners. And, uh, you know, that was, just the way that was a type of Freudian slip. When I have an opinion, I think it's the best. Pause. Pause. <laughs> hey, Pause. To just say it. To just <laughs> say it. <laughs> Well, let me, let me, we'll get into it now. So we got round one done of the, the neat, but I really want to make this cocktail with you guys. Are you up for it? Absolutely. Yeah, bro. Let's do this. Sweet. Let's okay. do it, man. Well, man, this is so exciting to be able to do this with you, dude. Bourbon sunset, because I think it's a great recipe. Bourbon sunset. I've been drinking. Bourbon like sunset, food. bro. So I pre-did my lemon. So I got to get some ice. Yeah. And also, too, I just want to say, you know, it's not always that you have time to do this and if you're having a lot of people around. But, you know, you can buy a, a lemon juicer that's literally six bucks at the store or on Amazon and fresh, ju you know, whenever you can, fresh juice is just the way to go. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. It, it's, it's what separates great from good, you know? Um, so listen, Bourbon Sunset, we have, listen, man, we got our own coupe glasses. We love these glasses. We're going to do, if anyone watching, we're going to do... Um, uh, we're going to do an ounce of uh, Brothers Bond. Paul, you know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to mix these together. Um, so we have two? We have two of them. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to get a little, excuse me, Nate, I'm going to grab some. Uh, Wait, where's our jigger? Oh, there it is. There's a jigger. Paul, I'm going to get more ice. Will you uh, pour, pour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we're, so I'm doubling everything, right? Yeah, just double it. All right. So I'll do two ounces of Brothers Bond because there's two of us, right? Your swag is ridiculous. This stuff that you guys put out, this merch is just crazy. Thanks, man. And you know, uh, we again created all this ourselves. So you know, everything has this beautiful brothers bond, you know, uh, insignia and. But the feeling too, and just like all right, the dark, you know, it just so half an ounce of Aperol. So for yep. us, that's uh, one ounce because there's two of us. Yep. Let me see Double. that. All right. Wait, that's. Uh... Uh, that's three fourths. Oh, I see. And then that's one. Yeah. The and then there's, gotta, the, gotta, there's gotta, the one. Gotta, 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 yep. All right. So that's one ounce, brothers. Okay. Yeah, baby. Aperol. Then we got half an ounce of Amaro. So that's yep. another. That's, that's right there. Yes. Amaro. Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. She suggested the Amaro Nino. Very nice call, test. Well, you know, that's the other thing, too, is that, again, it gets to a space sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. This isn't like we're not making. You can make this top shelf without breaking the bank. Like it's also there's just no, fun. There's no reason to buy. You don't need a seventy dollar bottle of Amaro. You just don't. It's not. You just don't need that. You know. You got great spirits. You've got great spirits. All right, half ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna do uh, one ounce because there's two of us. Yeah, baby. Boom. That's actually an ounce right there. Yeah, Boom. Baby. Okay. Then we got a half ounce of ruby red grapefruit juice we're going to do it now all right so there it is right there, there. and this is fun i feel like a scientist um in, all right so then you measure all the ingredients put them in the jigger pour into a mixing glass or a shaker boom this is the shaker we got our brother's bond shaker right here and this is it. i love doing this i feel like tom cruise in cocktail All right. Okay. So then you we're gonna just strain it. Strain it. Yeah, buddy. I know it gets stuck. There we go. Yes, and we have our brother's bond strainer, which I love this thing. Food. Oh wait. wait, 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 hold on a minute. Um add a stir and strain it to the food glass. What's that? No, it's good. Yeah. Shake or stir. Shake or stir. Whatever you want. 
just want to make sure we have enough to toast with. I usually take the lion's share of the cocktails and you get pissed off. So <laughs> know, he's like, what are you doing, man? It's so good. And I, you know, also too, people say like they might leave the fruit out. It really makes a difference. We use a little bit of a just a twist. Twist that thing to get those um all that oil and juice out. And then look at this. You've got a yummy fancy cocktail. To everybody watching, thank you for this. Nate, thanks for including us, man. And to everyone, on, enjoy. Man. Paul, Ian, I, you're the nicest guys I've ever worked with. I can't thank you enough. This is unreal. Don't I, let Ian fool you. You've never been around us. Hey, cheers, man. Cheers. Love you, bro. Congrats on this, man. Guys. Oh, my Are you kidding me? Isn't that delicious? I mean, not too silly. sweet. Not too. It's just like this perfect, refreshing. That is so refreshing. Mm. God, that's good. I mean, you come know, on, man. You can't taste I, could, the I could drink that. Like, it's dangerous. I know. What yeah. did you say, Nate? When you can't taste the liquor in a drink, that's what Yeah, I mean. exactly. Exactly. But you know, it's also, too, man, I actually just love our liquor so much that when you, you sometimes you get those little hints. And even my mom said, you know, when we're making cocktails, she, she'll, she'll just say, I mean, obviously, we're a bourbon brand, so we can't legally publicly say you can only use so much right but my mom loves the taste of it so much she'll just go just for me a, just put a little more in there so i just i don't by the way there. for those who is on brothersbombbourbon.com uh, you go to the website click on you know our recipes and boom you have every recipe and also if you're interested not that i'm not trying to be like you know a salesperson but since we're talking about it all of this brothers bond merchandise is available on our website as well. Like, all ours for the uh, uh, store link. By the way, and again, I, I'm not trying to sound like Harry, the Tupperware salesman. I'm not, but there is something fun, man, about like having a setup. I you know, look, times. Yeah, it's tough out there. Like it's crazy world we're living in. It's so nice to be able to have some friends over safely. But like, you've got your brothers bond kit. You pour your cocktails. You sit outside. You know. It's like it's nice man um and this stuff makes it feel so beautiful this stuff is is nicer than the stuff that i have and i was wow are you kidding me thanks brother thanks man you didn't just think of the bourbon you thought of literally everything from the label down to the fact that you've got brothers bond in the glass it actually feels so just homey and warm drinking you know this is so cool this is like something that i would do with my friends on a night in you know because like you said it's a tough time right now I don't think the tough times are going away either. You know, I, I really think that like doing this in your home is probably going to be the way of the future. And you guys just hit it on the head with all these products and they're actually good products, right? I put the strainer in, it's stuck in there. And I was like, okay, it's not slipping. It's not. No, it's high quality. Super high quality. I love that. And you know, and, and we're also working on some stuff to make stuff uh, without going too much into a, a portability of everything, but also oh, too, yeah. you know, it's like once you, you know, whether it's a mid afternoon or once you get the kids down and you know, you can sit outside and you know, you can make a cocktail or two and just sort of let the day go and have some great conversation. Even if it's with the neighbors across the fence, you know, there's, we're getting, I guess because our time to bond hashtag is really used. Well, we get to see how people are truly enjoying it. We get to see that like over the fence talk barbecue and yeah. it really involves brothers bond and it's, Unreal. Actually, in that, uh, question number three, I got the last one here. What is it like being partners and co-founders in business versus acting together? It's a good one. <laughs> well, uh, it's so I don't have to suffer through his performance. That's the that's one thing true. that's good. Um, <laughs> so that's a positive, right? <laughs> it's a uh, be yourself. No, but you know, um, gosh, well, first of all, you know, Vampire Diaries was our show, but it also wasn't our show. Mm -hmm somebody else's show ultimately and we were playing characters right and uh this is our baby you know so everything that happens here is we control it and so there's a there's something kind of lovely about that it's well i guess at the end of the day you have if you're doing a television show i mean first of all we did you know we treated the show as if it was our own of course because that's that's what we're doing we do it something we dive into it but creatively this is as if we are the writers and producers you know um if there is an issue and you're the star one of them 
You're the celeb. The co-star. You're the Actually, celeb. this is the literal star. Yeah. And, and honestly, our team are really the stars because they're the ones that have the ability to bring this to life. And the team that Vincent Hanna, our CEO, has put together is just on another level industry-wise. You know, I mean, these are 20-plus year veterans who uh, launched and built huge companies. And they're here now. They took a chance to come and build this little company with us. And after releasing this press release um, yesterday, you know, I, I, I was talking to Vincent on the way over here. And I literally, like, not to sound like too uh, emotional about it, but I had like tear, like uh, misty eyes because I was realizing, first of all, we're exhausted. I was up, I got up at 4.45 yesterday morning to start working. And also, too, there's a lot of international stuff. You know, it's like you're dealing with international distribute, I mean, uh, you know, trademarking and labels, and it just never stops, right? Never stops. But man, to see that online and to have people calling me, just freaking out, um, it's amazing, man. It's great. I think it, it was the, the first bourbon to do that number that quickly, something like that. Well, we don't know about that. I don't know the stats, I but I will say it's one of the, if something. not the fastest growing bourbon uh, right now uh, in terms of the ultra premium, which is, it's funny that we're in the ultra premium category because we're we actually thought we were in super pretty, premium. pretty inexpensive bourbon, and, yeah. you know, for right. Right. We thought we thought we were a super premium, but uh, ultra premium because anything after thirty five or thirty five ninety nine, um, wow. you're yeah. ultra premium. You're ultra premium. Thanks. Cut. Well, All right, cut, guys. Let's redo that one. Next so, time you say that, can you like squeeze a little harder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> a massage and a drink. Come on. Get it's the it. real brothers bond. It's the real brothers bond. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It goes back to because you know we used to we had the fortunate we were fortunate enough. Julie and our team and everyone in Vampire Diaries allowed us to direct episodes. But it was also, too, you know, when we were, one of us was directing, mm -hmm. it was so seamless and amazing uh, because there's no ego. We're not, like, battling each other. It's just let's get this done in the best, most fun possible way. And we bring that same toolkit and energy into this. Absolutely. It's made it so fun. So do you guys do a lot of um, tastings yourselves, you know, actually being out there in the market? Because I've seen all your stories where it's you in person signing bottles. So I'm thinking you got to be at all these places. I mean, that's Absolutely. crazy. Absolutely. I mean, we're flying just, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to, to the East Coast just next week to do some more stuff. I mean, I was just in New York doing a bunch of stuff. And I mean, we're, we're flying. We're, we're like, this is our baby. So, yeah, we, we and we're also going to be driving a lot of places. So, I mean, yeah. Listen, it's a weird world obviously with things escalating and changing, but we are as a company so safe and yeah, we're trying to do everything we can safely and respectfully. Uh, and um, you, know, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen just, to that. Yeah, I just, even the amount of COVID testing, we just like it's everybody just, lines up. Let's keep each other safe. Absolutely. It's just crazy. I mean, I don't think that I want to do anything other than be at home right now with a bottle of this stuff. Just go and <laughs> Pain in the ass right now. It's crazy. Welcome to my life for the last year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is not a bad, which is pretty great life. Yeah, man. Well, Atlanta is pretty awesome. Do you have it in any bars that you guys go to in Atlanta that you have this stuff that oh. you're, you know, uh, so up? many, but you know, we're actually doing a trip to Atlanta. We haven't actually gone to Atlanta since the bourbon oh. was released. Yeah. And we're actually planning a trip down there to go wow. to all of our old haunts and, and kind of, oh. you know, yeah, me see everyone again and and uh and really push it out safely there. obviously yeah but yeah but yeah. man the dream like just the dream of knowing that being able to walk into these places the great thing too about atlanta especially with covid everything moved outside so it's all sidewalk stuff yeah. now we always thought this would be better anyway but the atlanta love that we have or not just the show but well, there's we when we filmed in Atlanta, there was like a there's a little town that we filmed filmed in a lot, and you know they do they have you know like the, they uh, set up the Mystic Grill, which was what kind of like the, the the hangout on the Van Burn areas. They serve Brothers Bond, and there's local liquor stores around there, and they're selling out constantly. So what? yeah, Atlanta yeah, has a, pretty special. There's a lot of love for Brothers yeah. Bond. Be able to go back and it's still there, like nothing left. That is cool, man. Wow. Yeah. 
Dude, the Mystic Grill, I gotta just give them props. First of all, they took an idea. They got the space. It's so funny, when we were shooting, when we, when we would run into, because you know, you shoot exteriors on a completely different day than you shoot interiors. Okay. The interior of the Mystic Grill was in our, on our stages. The exterior was in the town square of Covington, Georgia, next to the big clock tower. And <laughs> I just remember so many freezing cold nights of running into what would be the Mystic Grill. You run in, it was a paralegal office. And so <laughs> just <laughs> okay. stacks of like yeah. files and so they you took know, that typewriters and shit. They took know? that and they actually turned it into the Mystic into Grill. Into the Mystic Grill. Which is pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> and they did this huge build out. And I gotta tell you, man, if they crushed it. I mean, it's not wow. It's you're not. It's like you're not going to see this, and it's not a Michelin restaurant. But this is a place that the food is incredible, the bar is incredible, and when you walk in there, I have this sense of home. But they really went, they went hard and made sure they had a great food and beverage program that keeps people coming back. And so now you can literally go to the Mystic Grill, and Vampire Diaries. I mean, I say this in all humility, but last year alone. It's so by some reports, it was the number 10. Some reports, it was number 15. 10 or 15th most streamed show in the world at 14.1 billion minutes. Yeah, and it's Netflix. been off the air for, what, four years? Come on. Ago? One of the top stream shows on the planet, even last year alone, over 14 billion minutes. A lot streamed. of that is my mom rewatching. It is. It is. <laughs> but like, she has 3,000 screens, yeah. and she just yeah. clicks like... <laughs> It's like, a, you know, it's like a command center. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, I mean, you know, wild. we should do part two and actually film from there. Because that sounds <laughs> like it's super cool. I didn't know. We should. Doing. By That's the way, here's what we should do. We should take our entire drink strategy and have the Mystic Grill bartenders <sighs> line, line it up. And we will taste through every single cocktail at the Mystic Grill. That'll make for a night will be dead sober by the end of it. I can yeah. hold my liquor. I can hold my liquor. Yeah. I'll be yeah. all right. Okay. Yeah. We won't be getting into the 67 Camaro or the Porsche. No, That's fine. Uber. Uber. <laughs> Uber. Yeah. You know what? I don't want to keep you guys. You've been here for so long already. Such great, great guys to have on. I, I don't know. You're so humble. You're, you're so just, I don't know, you're generous with your time. Thank you so much. Thank um, you, Thank you, Nate. A massive thank you to... Ian and Paul and the team at Reserve Bar. You know what? Once again, thank you, Reserve Bar, for yeah, thanks, Reserve Bar, for hap you know to happen. You know, and uh, there is a code. I will put it on my story after for everybody that wants to get a bottle of Brothers Bond or two, uh, which I would highly recommend. There will be a code for for you guys to grab a couple. So I'll put that up. And uh, if you guys, you know what? If you ever want to do anything again, please let me know because my crowd loves you guys. So well, thank let's you. have a drink in person to, uh, soon. Let's do it, man. First thing on the agenda, boys. Thank you so much. Cheers Thank you, man. Listen. Cheers, my friend. I want to cut through it all. I just yeah. want to say this is your your passion for whiskey is what obviously has made you do what you do. But to include us with your incredible, the people yeah. that listen to you and talk to you and interact with you, and to be able to bring our fans and friends into this, is such an amazing sort of amalgamation of passion and whether it was for Vampire Diaries or for Bourbon. So thanks, man. And thank you everyone for yeah. watching. Yeah, thank all, all of you guys. We, we watched all of your yeah. comments. We want you to know that your comments, we literally looked at all, well, at least I It's did. unbelievable. And, um, it's and I, unbelievable. I, also, I also love Damon, everyone. And, <laughs> and uh, cheers to all of you guys and cheers to you, Nate. And thank you so much uh, for having us. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Thanks. Later, guys. Oh, thanks for joining. Um.